a terrible of me to be so excited about Oxford. We have to work twice as hard as the men. We have to be twice as good. Oh, here we go. Vera, come back here now! Wordsworth, Shelley, or Byron. All these romantics aren't good for you, you know. Do we have a suffragette in our hand? I would be, given the chance. <laughs> Strong, be brave, be loyal to your homeland. Now we're a nation at war. All the papers are saying it'll be short and fast. Well, I can assure you it's never short and it's never fast. <laughs> Edward, my little brother, suddenly so grown up. He's only 18. There are boys from the town who signed up already. How will it look if I'm not among them? He was born to make his mark in the world. Roland, you've signed up. I have to go. How many generations get the chance to be involved in something like this? I am coming back. Stay here, buried in books, not now. I need to be there. You're not angels of mercy swooping down to mop the brows of grateful men. Oh, God. Especially those who've come down from an ivory tower. I shall never be afraid to confront the real. I want to know the truth. I news from the front. We share a memory that is worth all the rest of the world. This part of you. Don't destroy it. It might be gone already. Send our men to war because we think it's the right thing, the honorable thing. No more of it. Wow, look Hi. at this crowd. Lots of fans. <laughs> For him. <laughs> well, I know a lot of you are Game of Thrones fans, but today we're going to focus on Testament of Youth, which you should all see. And uh, I want to talk to you first about, this is your first, James, your first, uh, first feature film. Um, and this is a big story, and it's pretty beloved as well. So tell me about acquiring the rights and, and getting on board this project. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I went to Oxford University like Vera did, you know, in the film. And uh, she's, she's an iconic young lady in the UK. She's a passionate, romantic, forthright, and very, very determined young woman and you know what what kind of director wouldn't want to direct a movie about that kind of woman really who changed the world and and fought so hard that you know before we go to war think really tough there's a lot of young guys and and nowadays girls too you know they they join up in conflict and uh, you know we want to take those steps very carefully and that's what she felt so passionately about it's a it's a great movie story and Kit, you've done a couple of films before this, but nothing really at this scale, especially something so dramatic. So what was it that attracted you to this project? Um, I, I grew up with this story. I studied it at school. Uh, like, I think, I think they still have it on the syllabus in many... I'm not sure. Maybe that was too long ago. Um, but it's one that I grew up with, and I grew up with uh, the war poets and this part of this, this period's literature. And it's... it's it's a period of literature that I really loved, you know, and that I, I, when this came through the door and I knew the story well, I wanted to investigate it. And it's a part of this that I, I really wanted, I really fought for, and I, and, and I loved, I loved playing. It was an incredible, it's an incredible story. And Roland's a, you know, it's a chance to play a real life character, someone who existed, and that I had so much research material for. Um, so it was a number of things, that, and to work with Alicia as well, I'm listing them off now, but me and Alicia had met on a film a couple of years prior which was completely different in genre and tone to this one, and never really got to work together, and I think she's a fantastic, amazing actress, and I wanted to play opposite her. Yeah, she's so great in this, and we were just talking about in the green room that she's um, really blowing up right now, or popping. This popping. Is, popping, that's, that's not a British word, I love that word. <laughs> she's popping, it's great. What was it like to work with her again this time? Because I don't think before you guys were in many scenes together in your last movie. We didn't have a single scene together. We had dinner together about three times, but we never had a scene together, and we really got on. And you just you don't know whether you, when you're friends with another actor, whether that's going to translate to screen or whether you're going to work well together. But there was something really um, invigorating and enthralling about working with Alicia in that she is very, very single-minded about what she wants from a scene, what she needs. And you feel unless you really bring it performance-wise with her, she's not going to be happy and she'll tell you so. And I loved that. 
I love that kind of going, that feeling of, I've said it before, but it feels like, it feels like going to battle with someone, but in a really yeah. good way. And it, it made for some amazing scenes in this, I think. I mean, I was quite confident, because we do this thing called chemistry tests, which is you bring a very handsome young man in, and he auditions with a really beautiful young woman, and you see kind of how hot it feels. How, you know, and this felt great. <laughs> So I was completely convinced that the, uh, the romance side of the film would completely deliver. And it, yeah. Did it feel great for you, too? It did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, you know, did. this is not only a love story. It's very much a friendship of a group of friends. Um, and it's a beautiful cast. And a lot of young, we were saying backstage, a lot of beautiful young Brits. Tell me about the casting process and the chemistry between um, yeah. the four of them, really. You know, this is very... Um, young person's movie, you know, and in terms of the cast, there's some older actors in it who play the parents, but it's the young men and Vera who carry this movie. And, um, you know, for director, there's this sort of small group of immensely promising young actors who are all like Taron. I don't know if you've, any of you have seen The Kingsman. He's been in that movie and, and obviously Kit in our movie and Spooks and things. You know, we are so fortunate to have this small group of a highly talented young actors. So watching the film, you're really getting a sense of who are the next big, big stars to emerge out of the UK. And Kit, your character is also pretty young in this. He's um, going into college. So what is it like to play someone that's such a younger man in this, this era of going into war? That was one of the really, um, actually quite challenging things about this. I played this, I'm 28 now, I played this when I was 27. And there's a massive difference between someone who's 19 and someone who's 27 as far as what they've experienced sexually, as far as what they've experienced in life. Their, you know, their ambition is definitely there with someone like Roland, but it's not fully formed. It's, it's, their energy is flying off all over the place. And it's actually quite hard to take yourself back to that, to that, to that place. And it was something that James had to keep reminding us of. It's like, they're young, they're young, they're young. You know, that, that when these two meet, I think they knew each other for 17 days. Totally, yeah. yeah. And their love was never consummated. They were engaged, but every little touch, every little thing, especially in this period, was so intense. Was, was, um, it, it was quite fiery. And I think just to remind myself of what a young, kind of youthful person he was, and, and then when he comes back from war, how that's aged him, was a really interesting, uh, a really interesting thing to play with Roland. Yeah, I mean, you know, <clears throat> the thing is, all these young men went off from the big railway stations in London, and there's some scenes in this movie, you know, where she lives under the stress of having to say goodbye, and it's like, imagine if your brother or your boyfriend or girlfriend was going off on a car journey down, you know, wherever, up New Jersey State, and they had a 50% chance of getting to the other side alive. That's what you were doing. There were so many deaths in this war. So the chances of never seeing Roland again were really high, really high. There were such beautiful scenes when you're at the train station and you're leaving and Alicia is chasing after you and waving goodbye. And it really tugs at your heartstrings. And, and also what tugs a little bit is the, the poetry in this film and the fact that they're writers and they write each other, you know, love poems. I know that you said once on HuffPost Live, actually, that you want to be, if you weren't an actor, that you would be a poet or perhaps a, a writer. So did you kind of delve into that part of yourself for this role? I, like, I mean, like I said before, I, I really did love this period of, of literature to the point where I kind of um, tried to, when I, I used to write poetry, I still do sometimes, but I had great influence from, from writers during this period, like Wilfred Owen, Sassoon, um, you know, even Rupert Graves, who was a bit more romantic. I, I, I love this, I love the war poets because of their, the kind of concise amount of st stanzas they used and how they portray something very, very intense in such a short sort of, a short burst. Um, but yeah, no, I, I am not much of a poet. My poems are pretty shocking. I have written them to women, and they have been failures at times. <laughs> um, so I kind of gave up on that. But no, it's um, yeah, it was great to the, the really sad thing about this film, and and Roland's poems all the way through are, uh, are read out either in voiceover 
or, or in person during this film. And so we get to hear his very, you know, he's only, he only wrote about four or five, didn't he? Or yeah, thereabouts. not many. Probably. Not many at all. But the other really, really terrifying and sad and depressing thing about this movie is that he had, he had such promise. He, his poems are beautiful. They're really, really beautiful, but they are derivative. They are kind of copying other other people's poetry and he's not again he's 19 he's not a fully formed he had so much so much potential and this is what this war did it took a whole generation of men with great potential away from us he could have been a an amazing poet he could have he could have changed literature but he was killed at 19 spoiler <laughs> but you know it yeah spoiler damn <laughs> but it's you know it's also I guess for me as a director, it's also very inspiring. You know, it's incredibly inspiring because, first of all, you know, primarily Vera, she's such a life force. She's so determined and she broke down. I mean, for, for the young women in this audience, a hundred years ago, you couldn't make a phone call without your mum standing right there. You couldn't sit in a room alone with a boy. And this was in the States as well, without one of your parents in the room. You couldn't go on a date without your aunt going with you. You know, this is the world she grew up in, and this is the world that she helped change. And we often think of, like, the 1960s and the 70s as a time when women changed the world for women. Actually, this is the time when women first got the vote, first went to college, first got the right to become independent journalists or authors or earn their own income. That is because of the people like Vera Britton. So she changed the world, and at the end of this movie, that's the place she wants to be. She thinks... To hell with pain and suffering. I've got what I want to say about the world, and I'm damn well going to say it. And that's what she does. And if I might add, still fighting to be the out-and-out -out leads of movies. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. what Alicia is in ours, which is, again, a progressive thing about our film. And in Game of Thrones, you film so many action sequences. And, I mean, last night, of course, was huge. But um, in this <laughs> movie... <laughs> Calm down, guys. Calm down. <laughs> But in this movie, um, even though it's about war, we don't really see you on the battlefield much. So what was sort of the challenge to translate that into a movie? I mean, I, I really liked the fact that this film doesn't go... It, it does maybe once or twice, but it yeah. doesn't really yeah. go to war with the men. It goes to the war with uh, Vera when she's a nurse. I felt that was a great um, opportunity for me, actually, in that you see him go off one person. You don't see what he experiences. But me as an actor then had to portray all of that baggage from over there in his return scene, which um, is, a, is a gift for an actor because you get to investigate PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. You get to investigate what, what sort of what's happened to him emotionally and physically. And um, it was one of my favorite scenes was coming back, having left a 19-year-old with with uh, the idea of heroism and glory on his shoulders and coming back a, a semi-broken man, I found really, um, really great to play. So I like the fact we didn't go to, to war, really. We didn't see him out there. We do see, I know you splice in some images of the, the men at war while, yeah. you know, the, she's continuing to live on her life and you see their faces and moments that she remembers. Um, Roland, it's pr it's really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what's important in this film, you know, in her story, is always to make sure that you're seeing the world through her eyes, and so, and also this kind of connection that she had with Roland. You know, it's like your boyfriend goes to Iraq, goes to Afghanistan, goes to Vietnam, goes to the trenches. You know, you you have this desperate hunger to communicate with him. And so the looks they give each other in this film are really about, it's kind of like they're just trying to connect to all the noise and the chaos and the mayhem. They just want to find their own personal connections. And um, yeah, it's very emotional. And dealing with a movie there's, um, like this, there has so much grief. You were saying, Kit, before that your mom has this trouble watching movies where you die so much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, um, Hopefully I mean... you don't die in this show that we all love, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I spoke, I spoke to her um, the other night, and I was, you know, I said, you know, Mom, there's a big episode for me coming up. We should watch it. It's good. Um, I hope it's good. And she was like, are you in danger in it? <laughs> I said, yeah, m 
I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit in danger. And she's like, I don't like it when you're in danger in things. <laughs> I said, Mum, you know it's fictional. Yeah, I know, but I don't like it when you're in danger in things. I said, what about Testament of Youth? Well, you died in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to warn her in advance before she goes to yeah. see it? She gets, she gets kind of, yeah, warnings and things. So, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely feel like all of us watching the show last night felt like you were in serious danger a couple times. Uh, for oh, those who on. haven't watched it, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever feel like being a part of a show like this, that you can get the axe at any moment, or all these characters that, or friends that you make on set could just be cut out of the show? Yeah, they are all the time. Um, and, and yeah, I do. I think that's the thrilling thing about the TV show, uh, is that we, that we, we really don't fit by the norms and people are in danger and horrible things do happen to people and, and we don't shy away from that. And you can't count on Jon Snow being safe or Tyrion being safe or anyone being safe. So it's, it keeps people on the edge of their seat and that's why yeah. it's good drama. So when you get a script, you just sort of leaf through it to see if you're still there? Well, yeah. <laughs> you go right towards the end and be like, am I still there? Yeah, there's, um, there's something quite funny that happens to actors, which is that David and Dan, the writers, sort of will invite a cast member out for a little walk. Ooh. It's called the walk of death. Or dinner. And it's like, it always reminds me of, you know, like in, if anyone saw The Sopranos, when Tony Soprano would invite someone for a walk... And you see this person going, no, I don't want to go for the walk. <laughs> Just don't come to set that day. Yeah, so you do get a warning from them before you read scripts. <laughs> the other thing about this movie is it's actually shot in a lot of warm locations. And you spend so much time in, I think, Northern Ireland for Game of Thrones, which is pretty cold. This wasn't necessarily warm locations. Oh, there's one, no. there's one scene in it where, um, which thankfully, mercifully, I wasn't in, that... Um, uh, Alicia, Taron, and Colin had to had to swim in a in a lake that was like what? Yeah, degree? what does, does eight degrees sound cold? Yeah, eight degrees. Yeah, yeah. it was That's really cold. Were, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no in my short career. I have never experienced a movie where there isn't some kind of freezing condition somewhere. Are you just used to it by now? I'm just I can't wait for the, like that rom com in Hawaii that comes along. <laughs> it just doesn't seem to be in my kind of package of films. Don't. You're going to get so many scripts now set in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Do you look for something specific when you're um, looking for movies now? Um, it's just got to be... It's all first and foremost about the writing. It's about the script. It sounds simplistic, but it's... It, you know, you want to... You want to... I always find if I read something... It's again, sounds simple. If I pick up a script and I read it from start to finish, that's a good sign. Because a lot of them you... You won't. You'll go, okay, now I'm bored now. Or that's, that's gone the wrong way. Or, and then if I reread it, then I know I want to do it. And I reread, I reread this one. And then, you know, it's, it, you, I think you're looking for a number of things. It depends where you are in your career. It depends on what really, what's, what's driving you, what, what you, how, how something's going to test you. And this certainly, this movie certainly tested me. Mm. Um, in the short time that I, it, I was filming, I had, I had to shoot this out in three weeks. Um, and, then, and then it shot for another four weeks after because I had to go into another movie. So I had, it was quite an intense three weeks to get over quite a, a, a sort of massive journey for a character. And I, I, that, that kind of turned me on. I heard that it took a month to shoot that one scene in Game of Thrones last night, and it took three weeks to shoot this Three movie. weeks for this entire movie, and then for Thrones it, for 20 minutes. It was a month. That's that, <laughs> but that's just com two completely different projects, like that that require different, you know, different things. The other thing about this movie I remember is um, when the poster was first released, a lot of Game of Thrones fans were worried because your hair was yeah. significantly shorter, and it's in your contract, I think, that you can't cut your hair. I just have to return to the show looking the right way, so it can grow out. So this is a wig, um, which which was. Useful. I'm so glad we got to Not do bad. It. I mean, pretty, yeah. It's a pretty good wig. Um, but yeah, it was, in, I mean, again, again, it was a good chance to play something that looks entirely different from how people have 
got used to me looking from a TV show. Is this is a, a, a boy of 19 with short hair and no beard. It was, that, was a, that was a kind of nice thing to be able to play. I was going to say, how did it feel to shave your beard for this movie? Were you just like, oh, I could see my face It's again. still weird. Whenever I shave and I look in the mirror, I, I do have a real baby face. And, and <laughs> it's sort of, I like having a beard because it makes me feel like more of a man. <laughs> But, um, but it's good. It means I can still play 18, right? Or, yeah, well, may, maybe yeah. a push. <laughs> definitely, definitely. A real push. All right, well, we should definitely open it up to some questions out there because I'm going to see a lot of hands. Hi, um, I'm with AOL's website, Cambio, and one of our contributors from our Contributor Network Collab has a question to ask you. This is from Amy Ann, and this is for Kit. Uh, she says, I loved Pompeii and am really into Greek mythologies. I was wondering which of the four major goddesses is your favorite, and I will tell you which ones they are so that you don't, <laughs> so that this is not Athena? a history lesson. Uh, Aphrodite, Artemis, Athena, or Hera? Athena. Okay. And why? why? It's the one I could remember. <laughs> <laughs> what was Athena again? She was... Goddess of wisdom. Goddess of, well, there you go. Well done. Thank you like smart ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Who is your favorite? Um, oh, I think Aphrodite. Isn't she the She's one of beauty? Is she love? Is she love? love. love. That's good. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Anyone else? Oh, in the back. Uh, hi, Kit. Hey. <laughs> so this is actually a question about your acting in general, because you're playing generally the hero in most things you do, and you're just a nice guy all around, usually like a good guy. That can be relatively hard to play, I feel. And do you have difficulty with that, like keeping those characters interesting? And has that helped you as an actor to develop other characters that you have played? Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, playing, um, playing good is never what you should be trying to do. Like when someone's just a, you know, on, on, on paper, Jon Snow could, is just, could be just a hero of the piece. Roland could be just a nice guy, you know, it kind of the, and, and you should never just, be look, you should always be looking for what their bad side is, I think. So on the surface, Jon Snow's quite noble, and, but he's got a bad side, he's got a, if you really look at it, he's a killer. Um, he, he, loves, he loves being ruthless, he loves the battlefield. Um, also, he is kind of like a, menstruating teenager at times. <laughs> like, I, I, that's what I'm really, that's what I enjoy playing with him for the first two or three years, is he's actually just like a stroppy kid that doesn't really know what potential he holds, and it's now that he's starting to kind of really turn into the man, and that, that's been quite fun. I don't know, I, I, for whatever reason, I ended up playing kind of sort of young heroic characters for a few for, for the first few years anyway and I've really enjoyed that. But they can they're just as challenging as, as anyone else. And sometimes they can be too simplistic. You have to look for the nuances and everything that makes them a human rather than just a hero. Can you sing us a few lines from Wildlings from that Red Nose Day promotion? No, God no, that's the only time I'm ever doing it. Hi, this is for James. Um, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought the lead female was really strong and beautiful. Um, but I was kind of wondering, there have been a lot of World War I and II movies, and I wanted to know what you thought you brought to this movie mm. that wasn't brought to any of the other mm. ones. That's a really great question. So your name is? Michelle. Uh, it's a brilliant question. I mean, you know what? I'd answer that by saying women. You know, the people who are left behind to pick up the pieces, the people who have to kind of tend the wounded, their guys make them better again if they can, the pain of losing people, and then how you move on and rebuild, because she rebuilds. So there's a lot of movies out there, The Fury, whatever, you know, uh, and it's always about the guys, and it's normally about, can you slaughter as many people in as fast a time as possible, please? This is not that kind of film. You know, this is a film about what it, what it is that we're embarking on if we go to war. It's not an anti-war film, but it's a film about think really carefully. You know, we all, you know, the thing about young people is they're told by their elders this war is necessary. Was the Iraq war necessary? We were told that. Was Vietnam necessary? We were told that. You know, so each generation has to be skeptical and questioning 
and really object if they feel it's not the right thing to do. Hi. Uh, this is for James. Um, when you're auditioning actors and actresses, what uh, particularly makes an actor stand out? Um, and Kit, if you have uh, advice for young actors oh. as well. That, that, uh, well, I guess charisma. You know, I mean, you have in your head as a director a kind of image or a feel for who will say those lines, play those scenes, who's Roland, whatever. And you're looking for the best fit. And it's not a physical thing, it's just a kind of feel this actor has and, and a kind of intuition, an emotional intuition. You know, one of the things that Kit has, which is absolutely brilliant, and shares with Alicia is when he comes in to do a scene, I, he doesn't really need that much directing. He's sort of emotionally there already. And I think some actors have a gift for knowing where emotionally they should be, and others just need to work a lot harder at it. You know, this movie was shot very, very fast. We didn't have a lot of time to rehearse. We have to be in, we have to be in the moment, pretty well in the damn moment. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and it's, like for me, like, first auditioning for things, it's preparation, like, not being on book, being off book. It sounds yeah. stupid, but it's, then you can start playing. Once you're, once you're off book and you feel free with, the, with what you're doing, you can play around with it, and you can always take it a little bit further than you think you need to without hamming it up. That's the worst advice I've ever given. No, no, it's a bit, you know. It's like, I'm mean, sorry. The, the, big, the big scene Kit was talking about on the beach when he's having this post-traumatic stress, you know, we had the tide coming in. We had great chunks of rock falling off the cliffs because we have all this erosion in the UK. So between the rock falling and the water coming in, we had about 15 minutes to get the scene. And that's about three takes. And it's a huge scene. Anyone who's seen the movie will remember it, but it's, it's a big scene. And so you, rely, you know, Kit and Alicia, they kind of worked it out for themselves. The choreography, how she'd fall on the beach and all that. His absolute breakdown, that was for them to work out. And I, I needed their gifts at that moment. Um, this, message, uh, this question is from Periscope. And uh, Kit, uh, Sam from Belfast wants to know what are some of your favorite places to hang out or visit in Northern Ireland? In Northern Ireland, my, place, my favorite places to hang out and visit. I'm, I love Belfast. It's like a, a home to me now. It really is. Um, I think for me, it's the kind of bar culture and the, and the food, which are fantastic. I don't want to should give away all of the places that the Thrones cast go and <laughs> Is that what Sam wants to know? <laughs> the, barking, the barking dog is a, a favourite okay. of mine. Dean's, obviously. And that's why I'm... I'm gonna, <laughs> she's, she shouldn't say any more, really. Yeah. Um, Kit, you mentioned your character. Um, he was only 19, and there's a big age... or big wisdom difference between a 28-year-old and a 19-year-old. Um, what were you like when you were 19, and what kind of advice or wisdom, or what would you tell yourself um, now versus when you were 19? Um, I think I was more like Roland than I think I remember. I, I don't know, I, I was quite cocksure when I was 19. I was quite, like, you know, quite sort of, I think quite arrogant. Um, and then also completely unsure of myself at the same time. That's That's the weird sort of balance that I think you, you have, that I had when I was 19, of, of uh, projecting a whole load of confidence and arrogance and actually being a complete wreck inside. I don't know what advice I could give to a 19-year-old. It's a, I think actually, like 19, 20 is a really interesting age, 21. You're just finding your, you've gone through puberty. You're just finding your feet as an adult, as a young adult. And then the next big change, I think, comes at 28. You've gone through your 20s and you're finding your feet as a, as a, as a, as a young, you know, going into your 30s. I don't know. I just, it's a lot of fun being 19. Go and enjoy it. <laughs> go, go and enjoy it. You're only 19. Get one. pissed. Get pissed. Go party. Have fun. 
do all the bad things so that you can get them out of the way. You know, that's my advice. <laughs> so everybody says Jon Snow knows nothing. So I wanted to know, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? What does Jon Snow know? Self. Myself. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not much. I've always got very confused by that line. It, it pissed me off as much as it pissed him off. <laughs> and it was, it's not even a great, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, what the, I just wanted to say to agree, that's just like a rubbish comeback. What's, what does that mean exactly? I know nothing. Of course I know something. What are you talking about? You don't stand just up really, for yourself. It just really annoyed me all the way through. <laughs> What, what do you know about the final two episodes of Game of Thrones? Oh. <laughs> Nothing that I would um, tell any of you other than it's been... I've I really enjoyed watching this season. I think it's been a really testing and challenging season and those building blocks that have been placed are going to really... are going to really come to fruition with these last three. Um, episode 8 was very big. Episode 9 is... Big episode ten is big. They're big episodes, and 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 they they I I I can't wait. These are the three that I've been really looking forward to seeing. So other than that, I'm not going to see what happens. But there's some huge shocks. There's some huge set pieces. It's going to be epic. Shocks involving yourself? Or? No, <laughs> I can't tell you what shocks they involve or who they involve. But you'll you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Well, we definitely enjoyed this movie, and we want everyone to go see it, but make sure you bring tissues, oh, definitely. and if you need a good cry, this is the movie for you. Yeah. <laughs> go and see it. It's really, really... Yeah. I, I'm very proud of this movie. Yeah, we both are. We yeah. really believe it's an important movie. Yeah, and thank you guys for being with us today. This thank, is you. thank you. Thank you.